Okay, now we're going to derive the relationship between P and V for an adiabatic process. This is a long derivation and you, you do not need to reproduce it. You just need to see it so that you're not taking my word for this equation being true. You can see it's true for yourself. For an adiabatic process, the change in internal energy is just equal to the work done. So P delta V, the in, P dV is the integral form of that. Now, this is a slightly tricky step in this. We've said previously that it doesn't matter what path we take to get from one isotherm to another. The change in internal energy is the same as the change in temperature is the same. So the change in internal energy, keeping the volume constant, is given by NCV delta T. And that is going to be the same as the change in adiabatic, as the change in energy for this adiabatic process. So we can write this differential form PdV is equal to NCV dt. Just replacing the deltas with the d's as we're considering very small incremental changes. Now we have our ideal gas equation PV is equal to NRT. For adiabatic processes PV and T can all change. P and V are both dependent on T. So what we're going to do now is differentiate this equation with respect to temperature, capital T. To do that, we're going to need to apply the product rule to the term on the left-hand side. So we'll leave P constant and differentiate V, and then leave V constant and differentiate the P. When we differentiate the right-hand side with respect to T, we just get 1 because T dt is 1, so we end up with nr. Okay, so this is our derivative here. Now what we'll do is we'll just multiply all the sides by dt to simplify it a little bit. So we've got P dv plus V dp is equal to nr dt. Okay, now this is just what we had on the last slide. On the slide just before that, we showed that minus P dV was equal to NCV dT. This was the constant volume case and this was the adiabatic case, but the change in internal energy was the same. So what we're going to do now is replace this dT with this dT. So dT is equal to minus P dV on NCV. And so we're just replacing that now. These n's will cancel out and we have PdV plus VdP is equal to minus R CV PdV. Now what we want to do is we actually want to get rid of this R. So we showed last lecture that CP minus CV was equal to R. So we're going to replace the R and divide by PV. When we do that we end up with dV on V plus dP on P is equal to minus CP minus CV on CV, DV on V. Now, last lecture we defined this thing called gamma. We said that CP on CV was equal to gamma. So what we'll do is we'll replace this CP on CV, that's minus CP on CV, so that's the minus gamma. And then CV on CV is just 1, and that's minus minus, so we've got a positive 1 there. Okay. So we've got dV on V plus dP on P is equal to 1 minus gamma dV on V. Let's put all the dVs together. This dV will cancel that dV and we'll end up with dP on P is equal to minus gamma dV on V. Now we're just going to integrate everything. When we integrate 1 on x, we end up with log x. So if we end integrating, we get log P plus gamma log V, moving this over to this side, is equal to some constant. We need the constant as we've done indefinite integrals. Okay, now we're going to apply our log rules. We can write this expression here as log V to the power of gamma, and then log P plus log V to the power of gamma. Adding two logs, we can multiply the things within the logs. So we have log PV to the gamma is constant, now we'll raise e to the power of this side and to the power of this side to get rid of our log. We have PV to the gamma is equal to some constant. This constant is a different constant to the constant here, but they're both constants. Okay, so the equation for 
the relationship between P and V in the adiabatic case is PV to the gamma is constant. Now remember, gamma is CP on CV. You're given that on the formula sheet. A question to practice using this equation is 1131 set 4, question 9. It's a very hard question. And now it's left as an exercise for you to show that TV to the gamma minus 1 is constant. The easiest way to do this is just to use the ideal gas law to replace P with T.